Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com, and I'm standing next to uh, the first piece of farm equipment that I ever purchased, a post hole digger. I grew up on a farm. We had an apple orchard. My dad replaced trees every few years, and he always dug all the holes by hand. And I say he did. He actually had a couple of hired guys that did that. He didn't, he didn't actually dig the holes. Well, one year we had 144 trees coming from Stark Brothers Nursery, and my dad had a health issue and was on his back for six weeks. And the hired men had all quit. He had trouble keeping the hired men. I wonder why. And so mom and I had to dig 144 holes. And we said, screw that. I went to a local equipment dealership and bought a post hole digger. And from that point on, all the trees ever planted on the orchard were done with a post hole digger. It's a great tool for planting trees. My dad always thought that the auger on a post hole digger would compact the side of the hole and make it hard for the tree roots to go out. And that's what he said. He, there's a reason he never owned a post hole digger. And with 144 trees to plant, and I was in college at the time, I was stronger then than I am now, but uh, it, was a, it was a cinch with this. So we were really glad we invested in it. And after dad saw how well the trees did, he, he planted every other tree after that with a post hole digger. But it's a great tool to have around. And right now, I use it for three things. I plant trees with it, I build, if I'm building fence with it, and I've got a corner post and some vinyl fence to fix, and that's why I've got it on now. Or, occasionally you have an elderly dog die in the rural areas, and, and you gotta put the dog in the ground. And uh, if, you, if it's a small dog, one hole will put the dog in the ground. If it's a big dog, dig two holes close together and clear out everything in between, and the dog's in the ground. So, it is one of my favorite tools. Behind a front end loader and a brush hog, it's the third most uh, favorite attachment of mine that I use the most. So today, since I've got it on and I'm getting ready to use it, I'm going to talk a little bit about post hole diggers and, and if you're buying one, what to look for. Well, first off, if you're in an area like the Ozarks where we've got a lot of rocks, and these things get beaten up in the Ozarks, get a heavy one. If you're in an area that's got kind of a sandy soil and not a lot of rocks, get the cheapest one you can and you'll be fine with it. Uh, you know, unless you're building fence commercially or planting trees commercially, uh, uh, you don't need a heavy one of these if you're in a sandy soil that's not going to uh, affect it much. But if you're in a rocky area like the Missouri Ozarks where I'm at, I mean there are big rocks right under the ground, get a fairly heavy built one of these and it'll last a long time. Now there's not too many options on a post hole digger, but one, one thing I'll tell you, uh, it, it's handy to have two augers. I've got a 12 inch auger which I use for planting trees and burying dogs and then I've got a 9 inch auger and the reason I've got a 9 inch auger uh, the fence posts that, that I have on this vinyl fence here uh, are, are uh, five inches. And I don't want a, a 12 inch hole, you're filling in a lot of dirt and having to compact it. It's, 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 and I'm lazy, I don't want to do that. So I, I want the auger just a little bit bigger than whatever I'm trying to put in the ground. So a nine inch auger with a five inch fence post is just about right. So think about when you're buying one, investing in maybe a couple of augers so you have some options. Uh, I've seen people buy 18 inch augers. I don't know why you'd need something that big uh, for maybe a specialty application. The most common auger is probably a 12 inch auger. Just about all post hole diggers come with a 12 inch auger. But think about a 9 inch auger for, for smaller jobs. Uh, one thing I wish I had on mine is a, is a leveling handle. Um, uh, I can't remember. There, there's probably another name for it. but. It's, it, it attaches up here and goes back to the tractor seat. And it's just a long rod. And what that allows you to do is to adjust where that auger goes in the ground. And I'll tell you a little bit about how, how post hole diggers work when you've got them on the tractor and you're putting a hole in. As the auger goes down, it's hard to get that tip right where you want that hole. And that's why that leveling rod, you can, you can get in the tractor seat and drop the thing down and get it just about where you want it. When you're dropping your auger down, as the auger goes down, the post hole digger is coming down around the radius of the three point and the auger tries to kind of dig back toward the tractor. And so as you're digging down, if you can have your foot off the clutch or have it in neutral, it, it, it may move the tractor a little bit and it really doesn't matter, but, but you can, if your, your hole's not much bigger than your post, you can't get a crooked post. So, so remember when that auger goes down, it's going around the radius of the three point, and it's trying to kind of curve as it goes down. 
Now one thing a lot of people invest in, and I'm not sure it's a good investment, is hydraulic down pressure. A lot of people don't know your three-point has no down pressure. It's, it's lift up and gravity down. Now there are a few, some of the old international tractors had down pressure on the three-point and it made post hole digging a little easier because you were pushing down on the auger as it went down. Usually gravity will work just fine with a post hole, hole digger, but on some of the more deluxe models you can get a cylinder that pushes that auger down and, and you have to have remote hydraulic connections on your tractor in order to get that, but that cylinder will go out as it's going down. And it'll make a hole unless there's solid rock there. So that's something you might want to think about. Now, the uh, only other option is a stand, and I have a homemade stand. And I'm working with a guy to develop a stand that we might sell later on down the road that uh, will, will fit multiple sizes of augers. The pr biggest problem with post hole diggers is hooking them up. They are cumbersome. If you make a stand for one, that's great, but a lot of people put them in the corner of the barn or they hang them in a tree. I've seen people that actually drill them in the ground a few feet and then unhook them there, and that makes them real easy to hook back up, but your auger is going to rust in the ground. So they're, they're, they're hung from a rafter or hung from a tree, they're all, all kinds of different things, and they're hard to hook up. If you're trying to hook up a post hole digger, it wants to kill you. The, 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 the thing is top heavy, it's got that big gear box and it's going to want to go both ways. So it's really nice to have two people when you hook one of these up just, just so you're safe. And hauling a post hole digger is awful. Post hole diggers, you can put them on a pallet like this or, or drop them in a truck like this, but they want to do this. They want to come apart when, when the, it all comes down, the, the auger goes one way and the frame goes the other. And I remember when I worked in the dealership world, uh, loading a post hole digger a guy had bought in a brand new Chevy truck and it scared me to death because you, you really need to hook with a wire the frame and the auger together so they don't they don't come out but they they want to come out they can mash a finger really quickly they can fall on you there's lots of things a post hole digger and the other thing is you can get hung in the auger don't ever get off the tractor with a PTO running with a post hole digger around and I have known one friend and this is the luckiest human I've ever met got tangled up in a post hole auger. And the reason he was lucky, it round him around a couple of times and threw him away, broke a bunch of ribs in the hospital. They found out he had like blockage all through his heart and he had emergency surgery while he was in the hospital for the injury from the auger. And if it hadn't happened, he probably would be dead now. They probably wouldn't have found that. But you don't want to get hung in this auger. If you have any loose like hoodie straps or coveralls or hair, you get hung in there, you're done, and it's not going to be pretty. So don't ever, you know, it's funny, they got shields here to protect you, but this thing is in the open, spin it. So it's a dangerous piece of equipment, both from a hauling, a hooking up, and an operation standpoint. So you want to be real careful around post hole diggers. About the only maintenance to them, uh, greasy U joints when you use them. Check the oil in the uh, gearbox to make sure it's right, and that's, that's about the only maintenance. One other thing, if you buy a used one and you're finding it's hard to get it to go down in the ground, when the tip on the end of the auger gets dull, they won't go down. And, and so if you're having trouble with a used one, if you can find a replacement tip and those things come off and you can sometimes find a replacement tip and put a new tip on, a lot of times that thing will work like a new one. But postal digger is a handy tool. I, I love mine. I use it quite a bit. I don't like hooking it up. But uh, once I get it on, I dig all the holes I can think of I need, and then I unhook it and it sits in the barn for a while longer. But it's a handy thing to have. I appreciate you watching my videos. If you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd be honored. Click the Mike Face icon and check the bell so you're notified when I post future videos. Here's a link to my website and the Tractor Fun Store that helps support my channel. It's a great place to find unique items for a tractor. Here's a video about replacing a shear pin in one of these. Thanks for watching.